Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. And welcome back to Skyrim Special Edition. This is Hill. And we are out of character today uh, to sadly announce that this is going to be the final episode of the Zathras Talorius Gore story. Uh, we've reached 60 episodes. Trouble? And uh, yes, we have run into trouble. And I, I think we've done just about most of what we can with this character. Um, I'm going to have him jump up here on this roof to stay out of the way of these people. We've done, you know, most of what we can with the character. We've com completed the main storyline. Um, we are working on the Thieves Guild quest almost at the end of that. But, um, for 2021, I'm going ahead and upgrade my equipment and whatnot for recording and um, in order to do that I'm gonna have to switch to you know new equipment and remod Skyrim I guess from the ground up and uh, you know, this will essentially get rid of this character so I am gonna stop here with this episode so I can concentrate on getting the new computer up to speed and uh, you know we may do newer games in addition to these classic games but it's been a lot of fun and I thought I would end this episode with among other things um, a build guide of how this character was created and I guess we will first start off with the skills I mean we've gotten him to level 53 um, you know, he did not use magic, although his magic has been boosted, I think, probably with, um, yeah, I don't know what, what it was that, that gave him this magic. I never put any points in magic. Uh, uh, basically, it was health and stamina. So, as you can see, under the destruction tree, um, we've put no points in that. Uh, I think we did put, ooh, no, nothing in restoration. Okay. Uh, alteration we put no points uh, enchanting we did uh, f tried to fill out the tree and I also have a um, mod that increases these these base I don't stats like enchanting mastery uh, giving you five of five so most of these you know, had five of five, but here we anyway we put points into enchanting mastery, the gem dust, regalia, attunement, and we made it to the twin enchantments to put two enchantments on an item, but I just recently unlocked that and never got the chance to enchant anything with with two items. So we do have the smithing, uh, smithing mastery. Uh, the mod that I use doesn't give you, you know, five out of five smithing mastery perks. But we did go ahead and we filled out the merit smithing, expert smithing, and the exotic smithing. Uh, the other thing with this particular character, because he was not able to use weapons due to the curse that was placed on him by witches we uh, gave him long range ability by unlocking the dwarven auto cannon so we uh, you know put points in all of the uh, the perks for the auto cannon and we also unlocked arcane blacksmith So, he was a light armored character. We put no points in heavy armor. He was able to use a shield, and I put as many points as I could into block. And you can see we have four out of five in block mastery. Uh, we got the time block completed. Pope the Dragon. Apocalypse Proof. 
That's as far up this tree as we got. Uh, we also have Block Runner, moving at full speed. Dominion, Deflect Arrows, Power Bash, and Skull Rattler. I guess I should do this in more of an order so you can keep up, but, you know, basically we filled out all the trees only but to a certain point. Okay, we had no points in two-handed. In one-handed, because later there was a loophole in the uh, the weapons thing by using conjured weapons like the bound sword, bound dagger, uh, the bound bow. Those aren't counted as weapons, technically, so we did uh, unlock or discover the spell for the the bound sword so we did put points in one-handed so we got here on the left the furious strength that's as far as we got there uh the next uh, tree we got disciplined fighter that's as far as we got there and then we use the sword tree here and uh we got the clash of champions we only got two of three cross cut two of two Falling Sword. That's as far up as we got in the one-handed tree, and that those were the only trees that we uh, put points in. Archery, we never got around to putting points in. I probably would, because we didn't um, get the Bound Bow until much later in the playthrough. So I never got a chance to put any points in there, but I would have you know, put points um, if we were going to play this longer. So light armor is is the key to this build because he pretty much is an unarmed uh, character. So in light armor, we have the light armor mastery. Here's that uh, mod again that gives you uh, five of five. So we filled that out. We got the annoying mosquitoes, iron fist. This is where it boosted his. Um, unarmed uh, damage and he really became overpowered I mean it, this I didn't need weapons I mean for long range yes for dragons uh, we did but he was still able to kill dragons with his his fist it's incredible but yeah this is ordinator and this is the light armor tree the iron fist perks which just gives you incredible amount of unarmed damage so we had that we had the sweeping wind um, it gives you even more unarmed damage and uh, again rushing tide unarmed attacks grant 10% increased stamina generation breaking waves unarmed attack have a 15% chance of a critical strike I mean these things just made the character incredibly overpowered when it came to unarmed and uh, for here's the the light armor fit to increase the uh, the rating of his his armor and I'm sorry let's keep over here to the left we have the unhindered light armor weighs nothing into the maelstrom 10% less attack damage and that's the end of that tree So here we have initiative, two of two. A lightning strike over here. Your critical strikes deal 75% more critical damage. Again, these, these perks just make an unarmed character incredibly powerful. So fight or flight, survival instinct. So I guess we filled out that tree completely. And then here... We had Wind Runner moving faster while wearing light armor and War Dancer. And you can strike more effectively, 20% more of or more attack damage, so just way too much power in this tree. So sneak, 
We did get some points in here. Sneak Mastery. Infiltrator. And then we had Sneak Attack. And this um, also applies to the unarmed character as well. Sneak Attack with one-handed weapons and fists deal 100% more damage. And then Assassin's Blade. Sneak attacks with daggers and fists deal 1% more damage per level of sneak. So, way overpowered, but you know, this, this is Ordinator for you. And lock picking, uh, we got the Mastery 3 of 5, that's as far as we got with this. Nothing in pickpocket, speech, uh, 3 of 5 in speech. Alchemy, we got two of five in making the potions up to 40% stronger. And the experimenter to reveal all the effects of any plants and things that he ate. So that's all we did with alchemy. Illusion, even though it's at 100, and this is because of Akado's recital and he's using the muffle uh, spell that act activates every time he goes into battle which brought up illusion uh, to 100 yet we didn't put any points in it because he's not a magic character uh, conjuration for the bound weapons that he was using uh, we well, well we Excuse me, I keep hitting the stick here. Um, Conjuration Mastery was 2 of 5. We got the Mystic Binding, Soul Raider, and Rend from this world. So that's as far as we got with that. And, you know, he his fists were more powerful than the, the Bound Sword, so... You know, I just, I use the Bound Sword maybe as a courtesy, you know, against the, the enemies. And also to um, fill soul gems, because it does, you know, allow you to uh, prime these uh, characters uh, for their souls to be stolen. All right, I think that is it. We're back to destruction. So this is, um, you know, how he was built uh, in the, the skills and the perks. The other thing I'm going to talk about are some of the other mods that uh, went into the creation of this character. And again, I've got a little work if oh, you're gosh, interested, see, traveler. He he knows I'm up here on the roof. But uh, again, the the mod descriptions and whatnot, the links are going to be uh, in the description uh, down below in this video. But the major mod that we used, since this was a werewolf playthrough, was uh, Moon Knight Tales Special Edition. I also used Fortify Unarmed Potion. Um, he is carrying some of those, and you know this enables you to make a fortified unarmed potion out of tundra cotton and bear claws. But I never really needed it. I mean, I, I envisioned when I was making this character that he was going to have to be a werewolf in order to survive and fight the enemies and stuff because he couldn't use weapons. And I never imagined that his unarmed attack damage, being an, a, a non Khajiit character, that, you know, it would be so substantial. But it was. It's like it was incredibly powerful. So, the werewolf was still, the werewolf form was still more powerful than his human form, if you consider an orc a human. Um, but still, he, this guy here was just incredible with the, the unarmed damage that he could dish out. Okay, so, and Ordinator was another huge part of uh, this character as we just saw with the uh, the light armor tree I also used extended character creation options 
and that allowed me to create a black orc so that he uh, I, I think he you know looked like a good combination between red guard and orc people may differ but uh, <laughs> I think I did a pretty decent job with the tools and that's one thing I'm, I'm hoping um, in Elder Scrolls 6 that the character creator options might include a blending of these races because you know that, that some of these races are, you know, interspecies are breeding with each other and, you know, having children and stuff. So, you know, why, why can't we make like a half human, half Argonian or half Argonian, half Khajiit? You know, with some fur and some scales. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see something like that in the next Elder Scrolls. Because I, I know, and, and just from the stories and stuff that you encounter as you're playing the game, that different races, you know, they fall in love with each other. And, and they I've have got a kids, so you're interested, we, we need to see the, the offspring of, of those unions. Okay, so... The other mod that you've seen me use uh, extensively throughout the gameplay is the jumping. And that is going to be the min jump height, max fall damage. So I did this because I wanted his curse to be a blending of you know the, the werewolf and and him being in human form so the the abilities of of the werewolf extended into his human form so that's why his unarmed damage was so high and why he can jump so high because you know he's pretty much a werewolf even in orc form so that's what helped uh you know create that part of the character and Lastly, we have the Rings of Fortify unarmed. Now, I am using that. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, this was another mod. Okay, he's not even wearing it. But anyhow, this mod <laughs> allows you to, um, you know, have rings that boost your unarmed damage. Um, again, I was thinking that the unarmed damage was not going to be high enough uh, for a, a, a non-Khajiit character. But he doesn't even need these. I mean, we've got the ring of the stone fist, which uh, unarmed strikes do 20 per 26 additional damage. And I also have the ring of the iron fist for 15% additional damage and 50% uh, stamina regeneration. So that was another mod that uh, I was hoping was going to help me out with this uh, non-weapon, unarmed, werewolf, hybrid character. And lastly, the other part to this is the Imperious Races mod which helped out tremendously in the beginning because orcs have the uh, shockwave ability uh, when they jump and they land and their enemies around a huge shockwave will come out from their feet and I thought this that worked really well with this uh, jump thing because I can't imagine you know somebody just jumping like a, a, a few inches in the air and coming down and issuing a shockwave that's going to throw enemies, you know, all over the place. So this, to me, was much more immersive, that he would jump high, come down, and a shockwave would throw people to their feet. So that's basically uh, the character. And uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave them. Uh, you know, leave your comments. We will be moving on to another character. 
if there's anything that you want to see me do uh, in Skyrim, any particular missions, type of character, anything like that, leave me comments. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish out by doing a numbers job here for the Thieves Guild. Hopefully, we can... Uh, Welcome to Bits and Pieces. I'm sure you'll find what you need here. We can carry this out. I don't know where her uh, book is going to be. Looks like it's back here. Can I just go in here and do this? She's just going to look... Wait, is she coming? Yup, look at her. Oh, I can't do this, can I? able to oh I guess I'm in the wrong room she's not gonna let me do this <laughs> okay well we have to break in some other time and do it huh? all right a little work if you're it's night time let's see if we can uh, get back in to bits and pieces and forge her Liotta, ledger did you learn to make bows so well the same place I, I wait for all these people to clear you out see me when you get used to be an Imperial stranger. Ranger my boy wish I could learn some of that charm sure it be fine. just don't be late all right looks like the doors are still open uh-oh I hear somebody but here we go See if we can't get out of here without getting detected. <laughs> Oops. I'm going the wrong way. And I'm not sure how this is going to look since I've been playing around with the new computer and unplugging this one and whatnot. The graphics look different on this one. I hope it's not too dark. All right, let's get back to Delvin. Pull up a seat. Have a drink. Hmm. I've completed the numbers job. And here's the spoils. Bloody boy, where this came from. <laughs> sure if that will cover our expenses thank you Vex you've always been the most reliable one in the guild all right and do you have something special for me well it appears your actions are starting to make waves out there people are talking about the guild again in fact I just got a special job requested I haven't gotten anything like that in years so what's this special request I need you to make your way to Solitude and talk to Erica. He's looking to run some kind of a shield job. Now, he's not exactly going to welcome you with open arms, but keep you cool. Do this job right, and we've just made an important friend out there. Hmm, all right. What's the matter? Afraid of getting your hands dirty? <laughs> okay, so there's is another mod installed that allows you to get through these uh, these guild jobs very quickly so it looks like I just have to do uh, one I guess that one job that numbers job and then it opens up a special job that will bring us to the completion 
of the Thieves Guild, Thieves Guild quest. Erica. Ah, good to see you. Delvin Mallory said you have work for me. It's about time you got here. <clears throat> I'm not accustomed to dealing with people who are unreliable. That's why I asked Delvin to send me his best. Let's just get to work. That's more like it. Nothing raises my ire more than having an agreement broken. It's bad for business, and it wastes time. Captain Volf of the Dainty Slode has decided to test my patience on this matter by neglecting to honor a trade agreement we had established. I assume this is where I enter the picture. I need you to help me show him the error of his ways by sneaking on board the Slode and planting some contraband. What sort of contraband? You'll need to get your hands on some Belmora Blue from Sabine Niet down by the docks. She's the first mate on another ship, the Red Wave. Once you get your hands on it, I want you to plant it in Captain Volf's footlocker. I'll take care of the rest. Consider it done. Captain Volf is ashore right now, and I want the authorities waiting for him when he gets back. Now get going. I don't want to see your face until the job's done. What exactly is Balmora Blue? Not sure. I know that it starts with moon sugar, but all sorts of other ingredients are added to increase its potency. Used to be a lucrative underworld commodity when Balmora was still standing. Now the stuff is beyond valuable. It's also very illegal. Anyone caught with Balmora Blue looks forward to rotting in jail for a very long time. It was a pleasure. Hmm. I'm not sure I can say the same. Sabine. You reek. A little friendly advice. Take a bath and get some new clothes. Hmm. I'm looking for some Balmora blue. Well then, you're talking to the right person. I'm the only one left in Tamriel that can get my hands on it. It's damn near impossible to find anymore. You want to buy it off of me? Sure, I'll take it. Good. Here, take this key. The Balmora Blue is locked in a chest under the docks near the Red Wave. Hope you like getting wet. All right, here we go. to the dainty slowed. All right, here it is.
Sunday, get myself an island. Might pay off my bounty this time. Or buy a city on free land. That rat ain't mine. Could be anyone's. Won't get one rusty cent. Never should have come here. Damn, where'd you go? Looky here. Looks like we got ourselves a hero. Now ain't I this a surprise. easy enough. See, I'm so turned around. I think it's... Yes, here it is. Someone draw their sword. Ah, oh, here he is. You picked a bad time to get lost, friend. Here's an example of. Oh, he's already dead just from a shockwave. But as you can see, this character is way overpowered when it comes to uh, unarmed damage. All right, let's get back to Solitude. Eriker. <laughs> you and me, we're the only people around who aren't complete fools. Hmm. I've planted the contraband on the Daily Slode. Yes, I know. In fact, by now, Captain Volf should be on his way to the prison. Our contract is complete. Here's a token of my gratitude for your efforts. Oh, convey my compliments to Delvin for me. Tell him I'll be happy to reopen whatever doors he needs in solitude. It was a pleasure. All right, and that will uh, further the ending of the Thieves Guild quest. But this is going to be the ending for Zathras. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Thank you all for subscribing. There's much more to come. So until next time, this is Hill, and I'm out.